Today, we're talking about the best way to make cuts while distilling. And over the last five years, I've been a pretty strong proponent of doing that with your senses. Taste, smell. But was I wrong? Let's find out. How's it going, chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I'm Jesse, this is Still It, and obviously, like we said in the intro, we're talking about cuts and the best way to do it. Now, I have been saying for a long time, since the beginning of this channel, that the best way to make cuts is by using your senses. What does it smell like? What does it taste like? Use that information to decide where the cut point should be. I've been a little bit naive, I guess is probably the best word, uh, in doing that. To explain this slight predicament, we're going to have to talk about YouTube geekery for just a second. Don't worry, it won't take long. A huge part of being a YouTuber is identifying the specific audience that is most important to you. The people that are watching a lot so that you can make sure that you're making good content for those people. And it just so happens that it works even better if uh, you are making stuff that you really care about for people that also care about it. So when I first started this channel, it was entirely for the geeks, uh, the chasers of the craft that were into home distilling or were thinking about getting into it. Uh, and they were, you know, lone warriors at home in sheds like this. Speaking of which, I don't think you guys have ever seen this corner of the shed. I'm tidying it up. We've got a new project going in down here, but more on that later. Anyway, that's still the kind of content that I like making the most. I enjoy uh, creating videos for people that are at home and they're either trying a whole lot of different things or they're tweaking and perfecting specific recipes. In the grand scheme of things, especially if you want to compare it to the commercial world, they're making tiny little batches and they're doing a lot of different things to figure out what they enjoy making and what they like drinking. And the drinking part is kind of a almost like a happy accident at the end of it all because the rest of it is just so fun that you'd almost do it anyway. I mean, we probably wouldn't, but you know what I mean, right? The problem is the channel has uh, grown significantly, but I need to figure out where to put this thing too. I've, it's been sitting in a box. Anyone have any suggestions? Anyway, I appreciate everyone that supports the channel. I love the fact that I can do this as my full-time job. It's amazing. The slight downside to it is that I need to be more careful about what I say and how I say it because it's not just that core group of people watching anymore. It's weird <laughs> to know that it happens and it's even weirder to be talking about it, you know, back to the audience, but it's pretty standard now for, um, you know, people from professional distilleries to get in touch with me and say thank you for whatever, talking about this or that, or for me to reach out to a distillery and say, hey, I'm Jesse, uh, this is what I do. And they go, yeah, of course, I know who you are, I watch all your videos. That's bizarre to me. And it is not what this channel was initially intended to be. On the other side of things, there's a whole host of people that don't even distill, uh, that are maybe considering it, they might get into it, but they just kind of enjoy the process and they, they wanna know what distilling is like. Uh, and lastly, this content's not, really designed for you guys, but if you want to watch it, then that's, you know, entirely up to you. <laughs> There's those people that just want to create something to get drunk on for cheap as well. All of that giant, extremely long intro to say, I think I need to be a little bit more cautious about making assumptions about where the person that watching these videos is at. What are their uh, prerequisites? What are they into? Uh, what is their intended purpose for using the information that I'm talking about? So with all of that said, Let's have another look at cuts. So when I'm running the still, are there other things that I'm actually secretly using to figure out when I'm gonna make a cut other than just tasting? Yeah, yeah there is. There's stuff that I don't talk about that I use all the time. Really there's only two things I use, but I guess those two things actually break down into four things. So the first thing is the, the kind of the, the ratio of how much volume is in the still compared to the volume of heads, hearts, and tails. But of course that also uh, scales, I guess is the best way to put it, with the ABV of what's in the pot. So really what I'm looking at or, or thinking about is the actual volume of pure alcohol. So if it's 10 liters and it's 10% ABV, I'm thinking there's one liter in that pot. 
And the second thing is the percentage of the ABV coming off the still, which is pretty much exactly the same information as looking at the, uh, the temperature at the point of no return on the still. So if I've got a, a thermometer uh, right here for a pot still, or you know this is a, a pretty good second best place for a still with plates, I'm looking at that temperature as well. So if I'm thinking about and taking into account those other four things, not just smell and taste, why is the only thing you guys ever see me do to take a sample off the still, have a smell of it, and give it a taste? Oh, by the way, uh, thanks to the Whiskey Shaman who sent me this glass from all the way over in Texas. Thoroughly appreciate it, dude. If you guys are interested in finding some cool whiskies to use as uh, you know commercial yardsticks to uh, try and emulate, you should check his stuff out. The reason I don't mention the others is that every single decision you make up until the point of actually making a cut is going to affect what the optimal cut is for any specific run. Some of these things admittedly are actually pretty easy to adjust for or to be able to talk about the differences between. For example, think about the juxtaposition between making a apple brandy and making an Isla style peat. <laughs> For the peat, so much of the flavor that you're going to be trying to drag up is going to come way down in the tail. So your decision is going to be, am I uh, willing to take a little bit more talsiness to get this extra flavor? Most of the time, however, with uh, the fruit on this side, you're going to be thinking questions like, is it worth taking this extra headsy zing presence to the spirit to get that extra flavor? And the tails is going to be a pretty easy decision. That sort of thing's obvious, right? And I think people get it. The same as, uh, am I using a column still or a pot still? Obviously the cut points are gonna be different if we're talking about percentages. For a pot still, you might only start collecting heads at 75, 78% ABV. But for a reflux still, and you're making vodka, if you get down to tails and it's a 75, 80%, you've gone way too low. <laughs> Once again, I think people just kind of generally understand that and get it and it's not a, point of miscommunication. But people forget, what if you're running a pot still uh, and your ABV in the pot is, I don't know, 32% versus my ABV is 26%. It's kind of exactly the same problem, it's just, it's just not as extreme. So if I start giving out volumes of heads or hearts to hit or specific temperatures or ABVs to try and hit, you could be making quite drastically different cuts in terms of the actual outcome that I am based on the equipment that you've got and the wash that you've got. These examples are probably the most drastic things that come to mind in terms of changing where the, the heart's cut might come from, but there's a whole lot more. I've written them down because there's a lot of them and I'm just going to rip them off real quick and not go into detail on them. I guarantee you I've missed some and I haven't thought of all of them, so uh, chuck your ones in the comment section down below. Product style, we talked about that. What's in the pot? The volume and the ABV. The ingredients, of course, uh, but not just the type of ingredients, it's also a seasonal thing, a varietal thing. The specific style you're going for, the style of still you have, anything at all that causes differences in the way you run your still. So especially for pot stills, things like the ambient temperature, the groundwater temperature. Is there a breeze blowing through your distillery at the moment? How fast are you running the still? The intended maturation period of the product. Uh, is it going to be laid in a barrel for 10 years, for one year, or is it going to be served white? Like I said, hardly a complete list, but I think you get the picture, right? I'm cooking though. The temperature here has gone way up and I am slowly roasting, so hold on. <laughs> Bam! A sweet cut and a segue into our sponsor in one move. How do you like that, eh? Hey, eh? Our sponsor for today's show is, of course, into the AM. This sweet shirt they made specifically for our community. If you haven't got one yet, now's the perfect chance. That black hoodie that I was wearing before, absolutely awesome. Love the thing. That's from Into the AM as well. And I've got to tell you a little secret, guys. Uh, their boxer briefs are absolutely awesome. The only boxer briefs I wear anymore. So, a huge thank you to Into the AM for sponsoring this video. It's very much appreciated, guys. And you at home need to know that they have this sweet sale going at the moment. So, if you've been tempted by any of this stuff when I talk about it in the past, but you haven't got around to doing it, now's the time. Jump on in, guys. Special code in the description down below to take you there, which I believe uh, will give you an extra discount on their already awesome discount. 
Don't quote me on that. Anyway, I hope perhaps you understand why I don't talk in terms of ABV for cuts or volume for cuts very much, simply because it's gonna mean nothing to you. You're gonna make it slightly different than me. You're gonna have a slightly different still than me. You're gonna run things slightly different than me. And as soon as you've you know, stacked three or four of those different factors on top of each other, the exact number that I'm giving you, it's irrelevant. But, but, I said at the beginning of this video, I do use the other stuff. Why? And the reason for that is that your senses and my senses, our taste and our smell, suck. <laughs> that's the, I hate to break it to you, but that's kind of the way it is. What do I mean by that? Well, it's just like a known scientific fact that there's so many different things that are going to adjust the way that you perceive taste at any given point in time. What you had for breakfast, what you had for dinner last night. Did you have a spicy burrito or a kick-ass curry last night? You're probably going to be tasting things differently this morning. Especially if you had a spicy breakfast burrito, in which case, awesome, you're my kind of friend. It's probably throwing your flavour off a bit. The mood that you're in is going to affect things. And not only that, the idea of trying to hold a specific flavour in your head and then pick out that exact same thing from a lineup. I mean, it just doesn't work quite that well. Some people are definitely better at it than others, don't get me wrong. Uh, and yes, we're kind of more talking about the uh, change in flavor over time rather than remembering a specific flavor in the past. But all of that to say, if you really want consistency, doing it by flavor, it's kind of tricky. And that is why I use those other four things that I mentioned earlier on or two things, depending on how you want to look at it. <laughs> Basically, the amount of alcohol in the pot, both the volume and the ABV, uh, and the percentage coming off the still at any point in time. That's why I use those as almost like a safety net to make sure that my nose and my mouth aren't lying to me at any point in time. I'm starting to really understand the different pieces of equipment I've got and how they behave. I'm starting to really understand how I run things in terms of stripping runs, to spirit runs, so I have a pretty good idea of you know how a certain percentage ABV in the pot behaves. Uh, I'm starting to understand groups of ingredients. So while I've never, what's an example? I've never distilled with pear, for example, but I have a hunch that if I distill pear, it's probably gonna behave somewhat similarly to apple, right? I'm starting to build these things up. And the reason that I can't communicate that to someone else is that it is so personal. <laughs> it's just going to be different. So for the people that are distilling and are completely new to distilling and they've used their still three times or you've got a still that you've used a bunch but now you've got a new still, my recommendation is 100% go on flavor because what else have you got? Like how do you know what percentage ABV is the best when you haven't done it 15 times before and decided that's what the best is for you. <laughs> On the other hand, if you're running the exact same thing through your still every single weekend, trying to perfect, you're making like a, a half a percent change in one variable to try and perfect that one thing that you make, rum, bourbon, single malt, brandy, whatever it happens to be, then I'd probably flip it. I would be using the specific numbers, the metrics, the things that really can't lie to you like your senses can, as the main way of choosing your cuts. And I'd be using your taste as a safety net to make sure that everything is happening the way you think it should. But the only way to get to that point and really be able to trust those numbers is to make exactly the same thing, exactly the same way, 10, 15, 50 times. Assess the final product, decide what's working best for you, and then use that data as your baseline for cuts going forward. So let's go back and sum all of these little parts up and put them into one statement. But first, I just need to say a huge thank you to the Patreons. You guys are the people that make this possible. So thank you guys, I, I thoroughly appreciate it. And yes, yes, I know I need to get those, uh, those new vouchers out to the people that deserve them. Here we go. <laughs> as a YouTuber that's kind of got to a certain size of channel, I now need to make sure that I'm trying to talk to a wider audience and not just assume that the people I'm talking to are in a specific spot. So if you are a new distiller and you're looking for absolutes in terms of numbers to put into your still 
to make cuts on to get out the other end and get the best product you can make. I'm sorry, I, I, I literally can't give it to you. It's not that I don't want to. It's not that I'm doing this because it's the best thing for you. <laughs> it's not that. And even if you did give me all of the information that, that you have on, on what you made, I, I probably couldn't give you exact numbers to just go and use in good conscience because I haven't done it before and I don't know. And yeah, sure, there is somewhere out there, probably not known to man, I don't know, maybe it is, that there's some formula that would translate from one to the other, but it's just, I don't know, man. Use your senses. It's the easiest way to learn about the cuts you're making, what the still's doing, uh, and create a tasty product. On the flip side, if I had a commercial distillery and my job was to make I don't know, like four or five main products. You can bet your bottom dollar that I would be making cuts based on something that can be as consistent as possible. And that's not me. Because me as a sensory unit is just, it's just kind of fallible, right? It, it, it is not good at being consistent over time and ruling out factors that don't matter, like how I'm feeling now, how I felt the last time I tasted this product. Uh, crazy things like I'm just kind of over this product and I wish it would go away so I can do the exciting thing that I want to do even though I need to make this product because that's what my business is relying on. That emotional baggage is going to affect how I taste it, right? And if I'm making this hypothetical product, I would have already put the work in, you know, trialing different things 15, 20, 30 times over to really settle on what it is that makes that product that product and I'd have the data on it Everything I do would be identical to last time I did it and I'd be able to use the hard numbers to create cuts with my senses being a safety net to make sure that things are happening as they should happen. Does that make sense? <laughs> I hope that makes sense, man. Uh, I am really interested to hear from all of you guys. Uh, and if you're going to make this comment, do, do me a favor. At the beginning of the comment, let us know why you're making the product that you're making, because that's going to affect things. Number two, let us know the kinds of products that you make the most. Number three, let us know how much experience you've got, and then give me the information on how it is that you make cuts, and you know, like what different methods you're using, and what's the priority between the different methods. Cool? All right. If you've enjoyed this video, guys, please give it a thumbs up. That helps me out a whole lot. It tells YouTube it's a cool video, and it should show it to more people. It's good for me and it's free for you, so I, I'd appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel and you just watched all of this video, you need to subscribe <laughs> because there's a whole lot more content like this and, you know, this video is really made for the long-term people. Anyway, I'll catch you next time, guys. Keep on chasing the craft. See ya.